Hi, I'm Cecily Cullen. I'm the Managing Director and Curator at the Center for Visual Art. We are thrilled to have this exhibition under the guillotine, James Gilray and Contemporary Counterparts, opening on December 18th. It's an unusual exhibition for the Center for Visual Art. As we are a contemporary art center, we don't typically show artwork that dates 200 years. James Gilray's work is all political satire based on what was happening in the Napoleonic Wars and the French Revolution. And looking through these cartoons, we see so many similarities to things that are happening today that we just felt like this was an exception worth making. James Gilray's work is so relevant today in what's happening in our political environment. And going into a campaign year, it's all the more so. Um, to further make that point, we've invited three contemporary artists to contribute work to the exhibition. Molly Crabapple is a managing editor for Vice Magazine and has done uh, several pieces on political situations surrounding Syria, Donald Trump, and other issues. Chris Dacre is another artist we've invited, and his work is based on his experience in the U.S. military. He is targeting recruitment techniques aimed at children. And then our final artist is Deb Sokolow, and she's a Chicago-based artist who has uh, work in the exhibition that is looking at conspiracy theories at Denver International Airport and some campaign strategies of a fictional political candidate. I have one of the largest collection of fine prints uh, in the area. And it was because I was doing historical work and I knew a lot about the French Revolution, about Napoleon, about this whole period. So when I looked at Gilray for the first time, one, I said, this guy is a genius. And the second thing is, I know what he's uh, characterizing, as most people would not, which is why we have labels to help explain it. And once you get it, you start to laugh because he's so funny. One of the interesting things about, uh, about being a caricature in the late 18th century as opposed to the early 18th century is he could turn his talents in a revolutionary way, and this is the period of the French Revolution, uh, to making fun of individuals. In other words, it wasn't just abstract, um, like William Hogarth did, who was probably, it was a generation before Gilray. But when he worked, it was about morals. And there were, you couldn't identify people so readily. Gilray said, to hell with that. We're going to go after individuals and we're going to call them out in caricature uh, because from his dark view of the world, people were filled with pretense and they were filled with themselves and they were arrogant. And much of his fury is directed at the upper classes, in particular the royal family and most importantly Napoleon on that. But he also uh, made fun of people who were revolutionaries and everybody else. He was an equal opportunity insulter. He in effect was the great artist of human foibles. Um, and people say, well, you're you're caricaturizing the human race, which, you know, most artists spend a great deal of time idealizing people. Uh, I'm always fascinated with, with women. They have these beautiful pictures of beautiful women, and they forget the fact that most women and most men had smallpox, and if they lived, they had pox all over their face, but that you brush out. And so those we don't label caricaturists, in effect, are <clears throat> doing something that is on the other side. In other words, they're making people look prettier than they really were. Uh, Gilray would have none of it. And in that sense, he's not just a caricaturist, he's a realist. And if you look at what I hope people will see here, the thematics uh, here on love, on marriage, on being sick, <laughs> on um, scandal, <clears throat> he is talking about people as they really are. And so, unfortunately, people see caricature, but through my eyes, when I look at Gilray, he's telling it like it is. And that is one reason why he has become one of the most spectacular artists today. I mean, his reputation has gone up enormously because people can look at Gilray and laugh with him and understand that we are all human. I come at it as a historian working at that time in the British Museum, uh, doing research. Now it's separated, it's called the British Library. And then going into a print store, which doesn't exist anymore, and looking at this and understanding it much like you would see a caricature of Donald Trump 
right, or any of the other people running for president and laugh because it's your time. And one of the glorious things about Gilray, who was wonderful for teaching, is you can transport people on a magic carpet back 200 years. And once they understand what's going on, they can laugh as people in the 18th century laughed uh, when they encountered Gilray, who was the rage. People collected him from the minute he started working because he was obviously doing something extraordinary. And he survived quite well until Victorian times when people found his work. Oh my goodness, so offensive, right? Uh, he's crossed the line for him. Uh, only truth matters. And um, I am going to explain the world as I see it, and I don't want to die for it <laughs> or be punished for what I did. You know, it's interesting, in 1832, Daumier, who was much revered as a caricaturist, probably the greatest of the 19th century, and when he was young, he did a satire like he did on a regular basis of uh, Louis Philippe. Right, who was the uh, king of France, it's called Gargantua. I don't own it, but I would love to. And he was thrown in jail for six months. Nothing like that happened. And thus, this show is a tribute to England, and it's a tribute to freedom of speech, and about how deadly it is when you censor people and cut them off uh, from creatively examining society. And unfortunately, we are in an age where a lot of people who are much too easily offended, right, uh, by, in effect, uh, things, and I know this because um, it's going on all over the world, and um, I don't think Gilray in the current environment would have lasted very long. And so, in effect, Gilray is a tribute and he stands for something of which I could call in praise of free speech and freedom of expression. And he could never have done it except he was lucky enough to have been born in England at a time when society, uh, in effect, accepted what he was doing. The censorship comes later, and of course also before. It's a little mirror into what freedom really means, and I love that. Um, I, I wish the world was more like that than it really is, you know. Um, and so that's what it's about. And, um, <clears throat> when I uh, take people through the show, I'm, I've got four or five pe pieces. I want to explain and show them what he's doing <laughs> and why he would get in deep trouble if uh, he tried to do this today. <laughs>